Hi everyone. In this video we're looking at how to use the circles info element. This catchy visual element allows you to display a number of items in a circle using icons to switch between items. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. Ok let's begin. I've imported the business coach pre-built site here and on the solutions page I'm going to take these four services and redo this area to display them using the circles info element instead. What we will end up with is something like this. And here you can see how hovering over each icon changes the info in the circle. Ok let's come back to our starting point and get going. I'll start by coming to the solutions grid in the navigator here and deleting these four one half columns. So now I have an empty container and in here I will add a full width column and then the circles info element. Ok it loads on the children tab and as we can see there are also general, design, background and extras tabs. And in the children themselves there are also individual design and background tabs. So a lot of options to provide the flexibility you need for this element. Before I configure this with the general and design tabs, let's add some items so we have something to work with. I'll start by editing this existing item. For the first item I will go to the business icon set and choose the phone. The title will say phone consultation and I will set the content title link to the book a consultation page. And now I'll just paste in my content. Ok that's one item. I'll just go back and clone this item and edit the second one. I'll change the icon to a bullhorn and the title to say marketing planning. The link will stay the same and I'll just paste the new copy in at the top of the content option. If I wanted to style the typography and backgrounds of the individual items, I could do that on the design and background tabs of each item. But I think I will just leave these all the same and style the element globally. Ok, I'll just quickly add my other two items in the same way. Ok, now we have some content, let's head to the general tab and customise the element as a whole. I won't choose an icon here as I've already chosen individual icons in the items themselves, but if you wanted the same one for all of them you could set that here. Auto rotate is the next option and that might work here. If I set this to yes I get two more options, auto rotate time and pause on hover. I might just up that to three and a half seconds and see how that looks. And I will also leave pause and hover on yes. Yeah that looks pretty good. Activation type is next. You can choose click or hover, but I will leave this on the default of hover. Link area is next and I'll leave that on title, but you can set it to link the entire content area if you wish. And the link target I will set to same window. Margin is next and I might add a bit of bottom margin here to place this more in the centre of the container. Element visibility in CSS class and CSS ID are the last options and we will skip these and head to the design tab. Max width is the first option and you can resize the circles with this. The default size is 500 pixels but I want to try this a bit bigger so I'll set it to 600 pixels. Icons placement is next. You can have them on either the outside circle or the content circle and I prefer them on the outer circle so I will leave this as is. Then there are a bunch of options to control the size, colour and style of both circle lines. The lines can be up to 20 pixels thick and they can be solid, dashed, dotted or doubled. I like the default values but I might just change the circle border colour to colour 5 and the content circle border colour to colour 4. Content spacing comes next and this controls the spacing from the inner circle to the content. 50 pixels looks pretty good, but if you increase the number, the inner circle just moves in. Nah, I think I will leave it on 50 pixels. Then comes two typography sets. These are also on the child items if you want different typography for each item. I will apply the headings global typography set to the title typography, and I will just override the font size to 42 pixels, and the font colour to colour 1. And with the title hover colour, I think I'll set that to colour 2. With the content typography, I will apply the body global set and adjust the font to 20 pixels. And this time, the font colour will be colour 4. Icon size is next and I think we should increase this a bit, maybe to around 28 pixels. Yeah, that's better. Now for icon styling. I think I'll just change the icon background colour to colour 4 and the icon background hover active colour to colour 5. 
Okay, the last options on this tab are about the box shadow, and I think the default looks great. So let's move to the background tab. Here you can add a background color, a gradient or an image, and of course you could add multiple and use blending modes to mix it up. My container background is already blue, so that's acting as a background color for the element as well. I won't add any images to fit with a minimalist design approach on this site, but maybe a background color might look good. I will add color three and reduce the alpha channel to minus 80. And obviously if it suited your site, adding images and different colors or gradients in here could make this a very graphic element indeed. And remember, these are global options for this element and you can style the background of individual items as you wish. There's also the extras tab and element animation, but I won't apply anything there. Okay, let's just go into preview mode and have a good look at this. If we wait, it auto rotates and it's a great little visual reminder of our services here. I can just let it auto rotate through based on the timing we established, or if I hover over it, it will pause. Or I can hover over any of the icons to load that specific item. This is pretty tame compared to what you could do with this element, but it suits this site and offers the information in a graphic and novel way. I think it looks awesome. Okay, so that's the circles info element. Thanks for watching and let us know in the comments how you have used this on your site. This concludes our video on how to use the circles info element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.